is. All right, everyone, we are officially recording. Welcome to Painting Through the Pandemic. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Perfect, perfect. I see thumbs over there. Awesome. So I say we go ahead and get started. Yeah, I'm so happy to have you guys here tonight. Um, if you're just now joining us and getting settled in, in the chat feature in Zoom, I have listed out all of our supplies that we need for tonight. Tonight is very negotiable. I mentioned this earlier, but if you're just now joining this, let me go through it again. Um, it's really, you can do really anything you want with this painting. I have our inspiration painting down here. If you notice on the supply list, I did not list purple. We're gonna mix purple with red and blue. Um, the paint that I get from, ooh, I just took a big deep breath. How about we take just a minute and breathe for a second? I get so excited when it's time for paint and I forget to breathe. So this is my reminder. I always um, think about it for Alicia, my friend that paints with me all the time. Big deep breath, <sighs> let it out, center. Okay, so I don't have, I didn't put purple on the list because the paint that I use from Blick, the student acrylic paint, the purple is really weak. It's really weak and really transparent and it doesn't do what I need it to do. I have much better luck mixing red and blue together to get purple. With that said, you have to be really careful with the red and blue that you're mixing. Blue is generally not a problem. Red, however, red can lean either on the blue side or on the orange side. You don't wanna use red that's on the orange side because if you use that red that is too orange and you mix it with blue, you're gonna get poop instead of purple. And that's not an attractive look. It's not a good, not a good look. So if you're not sure what red you have, you might do a little bit of mixing on your plate, um, pull just a little bit of red and a little bit of blue together to see if you can get a purple. Maybe add a little bit of white to it. That'll help you see really what color it is. Um, but that's my word of caution to you. If your red is too orange and you're not getting the purple that you want, it's best to just leave it out. Just, just stay blue, do something different in the sky. Don't try to get that purple, okay? so. Let's, um, let's run through our inventory. Move my sign out the way here. I always like to run through my inventory and make sure I have everything we need before we get started painting. So I have my inspiration picture. That's always important because I'm really bad at pulling stuff out of my brain. Um, I like to have something to go off of. Now I can manipulate it and modify it and change it, but it's always nice to have something to go off of. And I'm feeling very Halloween. Right, I love Halloween. So I'm thinking we might get jack-o'-lanterns in there around that fence somewhere. I don't know, we'll see, I don't know. We'll see what happens. So I have my inspiration painting. Make sure you have an apron or a paint shirt. Um, the paint that I'm using is acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is lovely because it's water-based, it's water-soluble, you can clean it up with water, but if you get it on your clothes and it dries, it won't come out because acrylic paint, essentially when it dries, it turns to plastic and it's really hard to get out of fiber. So make sure you have an apron. I still have aprons at the studio if anybody needs them. Um, make sure you have an apron or a paint shirt on. Okay, canvas. Tonight I have, tonight I always have, 16 by 20 stretched canvas. That means it's stretched around and wrapped and stapled on the back. Um, think about, I have my canvas vertical. This painting, however, is landscape. Think about how you're gonna paint it tonight. Are you gonna stay vertical or are you gonna flip it sideways? I can't, I can't decide, I'm still kind of thinking through that. I think I might go landscape because the, the initial, the uh, original inspiration picture is landscape but that's up to you. It's your painting. Think about where you're going to put it when you're done with it. Um, are you going to, do you have a spot on a bookshelf that will accommodate a nice landscape painting? Well, this painting is easy enough to do either way, okay? So ponder that. Um, make sure you have a water cup. Um, I like to use something heavy. I'm less likely to knock it over, so an old coffee cup or a mason jar. Halfway full with cool or cold water never warm or hot. It always needs to be cool or cold. I've got some paper towels to block my brushes on. Let's talk about brushes for tonight. You need a big fat wash brush, something that we can use to paint the background with, 
some kind of a medium brush. I've got my trusty old medium filbert brush. Um, it might be easier for you tonight if you have a brush that's squared off, especially when we get to those fence posts, because the fence posts are nice and square at the top. Mine are gonna end up being a little more round because I have a filbert. And a pointy brush, something that's nice and lovely and um, small-ish. This one's a five, a number five round to do our tree branches with, okay? Optional thing, oh, when I'm not using those, they live in the water cup. So I'm gonna take all three of those, dump them in my water cup, leave them there. Optional things you might have tonight, I have a toothbrush. It wasn't on the supply list, but you could decide if you wanted to splatter some stars in the sky. Up to you. Would you see stars because it's a full moon night? The light of the moon might drown out the stars. I don't know, that, that's up to you to figure out if you wanna do that. But I always have one in my paint bag just in case. I don't know, we'll see. So I'm gonna toss that to the side. I always have a paint pen. I say it every time because I'm crap at signing my name with a paint brush. So I have a, I always keep a paint pen with me just in case. Um, and then paint. Don't judge my paint palette tonight. Th things happened. It, it, it's a hot mess. I was trying to empty out my bottle of blue and it lost its mind. So tonight I have uh, black, white, red, and blue. That's it. That's all I need for this painting. Okay. And word of caution again, if you're not sure about your red, the red I'm using is bright red. If you're using fire red, I wouldn't mix it with blue. Fire red is too orange, okay? So if you're not sure what red you have, do a little bit of mix in there on your plate first. Okay, I say we go ahead and get started, yes? Yes. I said that as if we were in the studio that I could hear you. Yes? Yes. All right, let's start with our, thanks for the nod, Emily. I love, I love the feedback. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's start with our big brush. If we look, let's talk really quickly about this painting, how this is going to work. Let's paint top down. So I'm going to start with blue, and then I'm going to work my way into red and a little bit of white. So that'll give me that lovely purple. We're gonna paint that entire background sky first, and then we'll start layering things on top. We'll put our ground in, our trees. This is all in silhouette and black. We can get some um, gray highlights in there, but it's all in black. So we'll do our trees and then our fence, and we'll get our moon up in there. So that's how this is gonna work tonight. So let's get started. Big brush, I'm gonna swish it around in my water cup. I always start with a damp brush, not wet, just damp. Dry it off on my paper towel. And I'm gonna start with just blue. Now, anytime you take paint, remember, always in the edge, never the middle, right? Always in the edge of the puddle. So let's start with blue. And my sky is gonna be very side to side. Whoop. Now, you're gonna find that the blue is very transparent. You're gonna be able to see all your little brush strokes in there. The only way to make it less transparent and not see those brush strokes is to add a little bit of blue, I'm sorry, blah, 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 a little bit of black or a little bit of white. So if those brush strokes make you crazy that it's looking way too transparent, you gotta make a decision. Add a little bit of black or a little bit of white. I think I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of black, just a tiny, tiny bit, because I want it to be a dark, dark night sky anyway. So I have blue, the teeniest, teeniest bit of black. Keep right there, teeniest bit. And let's take that blue down a big fat hand width. Okay? Big old fat hand width. So I've got blue on my brush and a little bit of black. And I'm going side to side, getting my edges as I go because it's easier to match them as you go than it is to try to match them up later, okay? Oh, struggles, there we go. Okay, so I'm doing blue, oops. 
blue and a teeny bit of black because that black will overwhelm that blue if I'm not careful, careful. And again, I'm going down about a fat hand width. Get up there and get that tippy top. Okay. So I'm going to have you just keep going about it. Fat hand width down, blue, tiny bit of black. The black is up to you, but I'm, I'm going to use a tiny, tiny bit. I'm so glad you all came to paint with me tonight. This always makes me happy. The studio is still closed. The physical studio is still shut down, um, but I'm doing more and more virtual things. I've got some big virtual parties coming up, um, some virtual fundraisers. I'm hoping to be able to get the studio open in September, um, but the closer September gets, the more nervous I get. I guess I'm kind of waiting to see what happens with schools. Um, I feel like once schools are in session, we'll, we'll start to really see how things are going. So I'll take my, take my cue from, from what happens in the schools on what I should do with the studio. There we go. But we're not here to talk about COVID. Let's not talk about COVID tonight. Okay. Got a big, big fat hand. I might go down a little bit further. Blue, tiny bit of black. Okay. Long side to side brush strokes. Now, because that sky, because that paint is so dark, make sure you're moving your canvas. You see me picking it up every now and then and moving it, making sure I get in all the, the uh, canvas weave. Make sure I'm covering my weave. Okay. Oh, I gotta get this edge, my bad. I'm so bad at painting my edges, remembering to paint them. But it is easier to paint them as you go than it is to try to match them up later. Okay, so now, I want to blend into purple. I'm going to finish out, I'm going to finish up this canvas with purple so I can get it to blend. I'm not going to rinse my brush out. To blend, you want to take the color you've been using. So I've been using blue, so I'm going to get a little more blue on my brush, and then add your new color. So I've got blue on my brush, and I'm going to add some red. I'm going to start in this new section, and it's going to look shocking, but I know acrylic paint blends while it's wet. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to go up into side to side to side, up into the old, back down into the new. Up into the old section while it's still wet, back down into the new. So I'm taking that red, up into the blue, which is blending into purple, and I'm coming back down into the red. Now I'm only going up, I don't know, an inch, maybe two inches or so. I don't want to work up too far because I'll start to pick up half dried paint. So I'm going to leave that alone up there. So I'm working up about an inch or so and back down. Work up about an inch or so and back down. And as I go, I want my sky to get lighter. So I'm gonna take less blue, more red, and a little bit of white to start to get it lighter. Every time in my new section, up into my old about an inch or so, and back down. Up, oh, about an inch or so, 
and back down. And that's helping me get that lovely blend so I don't have uh, stripes of color. If you feel like you have stripes, keep working it the same way. Up into the old section, down to the new section, because you're taking the red up and bringing the blue down. And we're gonna keep going and finish out the whole canvas. By the time we're done with this, that whole canvas should be covered. It's interesting too, this, um, the sky, if I look at it, the sky on the original painting is very purpley muted. Mine is very bright purple, kind of like the bright purple, right? If you wanted to mute yours to have it a little more like this original, add a little more white and a tiny, tiny bit of black. That's gonna tone it down. But I really like that brilliant color I'm getting, so I'm gonna stick with it. So I always like to be respectful of everyone's time. It is 7.22. I'm going to say 7.45, we're going to move on. I'll check in with y'all at 7.45, but I feel, like, I feel like that would be time for us to move on. And before we move on, we're going to want our canvas dry. So that should give everybody time to paint their canvas, to paint that whole sky, to head to the blow dryer. Something else I'd like to point out that as you do this, we have a habit, habit, I don't know if habit's the right word, but we feel like we need to use our brush flat because we're getting more surface if we use it flat. But sometimes when I'm blending like this, especially in a sky, I will turn my brush skinny ways. I like to do that if I feel like I'm getting hard marks where I pick up my brush and I put it down. If you turn it and use it skinny ways, you're less likely to get those really harsh marks on your canvas where you pick your brush up and put it down. Just putting that out there for you. So as I go down, I'm gonna to start to add more white. Because I want my sky to be dark up here and get lighter as I come down. And edges, don't forget your edges. Oh, hello, Anita. I just saw your comment, how to get red color. You should have um, mix your red paint with a little bit of blue and a little bit of white. If you mix red and blue, you're going to get that uh, lovely purpley color and a little bit of white with it. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention to the chat. I was so focused in my, focused on my background. Oh yeah, let me, um, let, give me just a second. Let me give you the, the ability to unmute yourself. Okay, Anita, you should be able to unmute yourself. Well, hi, how are you? I'm good, nice honey, how are you? Finally, I'm back. 
Yeah, I'm so glad you're back. Thanks a lot. Actually, I don't know how to do this one. You know, the after the purple, the reddish hue, I'm not able to get it. You know, after With the red dark, and white? Yeah, after the dark uh, purple, the dark blue, then you have that reddish. Yeah. Yeah, that red. It's it's uh, just red and blue, and there's no white in there yet. Red and blue? Oh, okay, so more of yeah. red. More yeah. red, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so we should do light purple most of it, right? Yes. You want to you want to get lighter as you go down toward the horizon. Well, and then I need to put white, right? Then yes. I need to fix yes, white. Correct. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're you're welcome. Okay. So again, we're going to keep going. We're going to go all the way down, cover that entire canvas. If you wanted to work, because this is kind of a, a very ethereal night, right? Excuse me. If you wanted to work some, um, like some mist or the idea of little bits of clouds in there, but we don't want them to look like cloud clouds, right? We want them to be just kind of ethereal. I talked a minute ago about turning your brush skinny ways. What if you take a little bit of, I have just a little bit of white on that messy brush and turn it skinny ways. And what if you shush some white up in here? Ooh. I'm barely touching the canvas. And I don't wanna go too far because I still want my canvas to be, um, I still want my paint to be pretty wet because I don't want to lay the paint on it. I want the paint to blend. But that's lovely. If you turn it skinny ways and shush a little bit of white up in there. But I need to stop doing that. I need to finish, finish up down here. I need to focus. Oh, the focus is not strong tonight. <sighs> this is me reminding you to breathe. I think that's more of a reminder for me tonight than it is anybody else. Oh, why, but I'm not breathing tonight. Oh, backgrounds always make me happy. Mm. I could paint skies forever, I think. I feel like some of us have talked about that before. It's, it's hard sometimes when you have such a beautiful background to want to put anything on it. And you know you don't have to. That, that's your decision to make. I have a friend that um, just paints lovely backgrounds and then she waits for a quote. She waits for something to inspire her and then she puts a quote on it. She writes a quote across it. That is absolutely something you could do. Okay, finishing this out here. I'm not too worried about that bottom section because I'm gonna put black over it. But I'm not sure how high up I want to take my ground. 
So I'm going to make sure and take my color all the way down. So if I have just a tiny bit of ground, I know the background is covered. But as I talk about painting your edges, not worried about that bottom edge because I'm going to end up painting that black. Okay. So now that I have it done, I'm going to turn, put a little bit of white on that brush and turn it skinny ways. I'm going to shush, shush some, oh, that's a lot of white. Shush some clouds up in there. Just little bits. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. So what did I say? 7.45? So about 14-ish minutes. And we'll be ready to move on. Once we're done with this step, you won't need any more red or blue. We'll just need black and white, okay? So about 14 minutes, we'll move on. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure your canvas is dry for the next step. Oh, edges. So bad at remembering to paint the edges. So I'm going to do that here. You know, I love stretch canvases because you can paint the edges and then you don't have to frame it. You don't have to do anything else with it. But that's if you're, if you're good at remembering to paint them. I am not always good at remembering. I'm not always good. I am not ever good at remembering to paint edges. All right, and when I'm done, brush and water cup. Oh, and I know, um, I know a lot of us like to um, clean our brushes out and get clean water. Not too concerned about that tonight. Um, you might want to clean your brushes out and get clean water when we move on to the moon. Um, but I'm actually going to work in black next, so I'm fine if my brushes are a little dirty and my water's a little dirty. I'll let you know when you need to go rinse out. How's that? So while we're all painting, we've got, um, what, about 12, 12-ish minutes before we move on. A couple things I always like to point out. Again, thank you all so much for painting tonight. This makes me happy. Um, I am recording, so if you get to the point that you're just like, Ur, it's just not working out, don't let it stress you out, right? Put your brushes down, walk away, clean your supplies up, come back and finish it later. Because I am recording, I'll post it up on the studio's YouTube channel um, tonight or tomorrow, whenever my internet complies. That's always a struggle for me in my, my rural internet. So um, we'll get it, I'll get it posted up either tonight or tomorrow. Um, I also like to point out that there will come a time that I will call our painting done for the evening, usually around nine o'clock or so. When I call it done, I'll give you an hour to send me um, a picture of yourself with your painting. I love to see your, your faces in, in the pictures. So take a selfie of you with your painting um, and you'll have an hour to send it to me. So, all right, I am going to step away for a second. I always have to do a bulldog check-in because you know, whenever you start something, Kids and dogs, they always like, you're on Zoom, you're in a Zoom meeting and they do stuff. So I'm gonna go check on my, check on my bulldog because she's making noises. So uh, 10 minutes, we'll move on, 7.45. Okay. Oh, 
like that. Okay. Okay, so I'm looking at my canvas and I know we're not moving on till 745, but I can see that top part of my canvas is still, it's still pretty wet. It's still, you can see it shining in the light. It's still pretty shiny. So I'm going to take this time and go to the blow dryer. Um, you know, I keep saying we want our canvas to be dry. I think we do. I think we do. I'm not super concerned if it's a little wet because we're going to put black on next. But if I try to put a black ground down here and I still have white in there that's wet, it's going to turn gray on me. And I really like the idea of that strong silhouette contrast. So that nice light purple and then that black contrast on top of it. And if that's still wet with white, I'm going to have a hard time getting my ground black. So I'm going to take the time and go to the blow dryer. So I'm going to be able to lay black on top of it. So I will be back. And what about seven minutes? We'll move on. Seven, eight minutes. About 7.45. All right. Okay. All right. I just went to the blow dryer for a minute, so I'm back. Let's see. I know we still have about six minutes before we move on. I know I mentioned um, stars with the toothbrush. Is anybody thinking? Thinking about stars in their sky? Does any, how about, does anybody need me to go through the, the tutorial on how to do stars? If you do, pop something in the chat feature and I'll, uh, I'll show you before we move on. Okay. But if nobody's going to do stars or if you already know how to do it, then I won't bother. Oh, and because I'm on a drying break, um, I feel the need to tell you about my chickens. So I talk about my chickens every week. I feel like it's becoming a thing. I have little chicken stories. So um, we have 11 older chickens that we've been getting eggs from not as often as, as we would have when they were younger because they're older now. And as they get older, they start to let up a little bit. So we've been getting eggs. We every now and then get some light blue eggs, some lovely brown eggs. Um, our, and then we have some younger chickens. Our younger ones have started to lay eggs and it's so funny because they lay them in random spots. So now whenever I walk into the chicken coop, I have to be really careful where I step because 
I feel like these, these young girls are walking around and they're just like, oh, there's an egg. And they'll just leave eggs in random places. But I feel, I feel compelled to show you, we got our first green eggs yesterday. So I have to uh, stand by. Okay, so here we go. We've been, we've been getting brown eggs, some lovely, lovely brown eggs, just like you get at the grocery store. And then I walked in the coop and found, found this green egg, and it's just little. And I was so excited. And then later in the same day, we have two olive egger chickens. Um, later in the same day, I found this egg. And it's green as well. But let me show you for size comparison. Here's the first one, and then there's the second one. And one of my girlfriends said, it's kind of like a six pound baby and a 13 pound baby. But it's from the same, not the same chicken, but the same breed of chicken. These are from my olive eggers. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there, why they're so different, but anyway, chicken stories. I love my chickens. I make my heart happy. And shouldn't we all have that in life, right? Shouldn't we all have those things that make us happy? Okay, so I feel like I should probably warn you when I'm gonna go off on a tangent and tell a story and tell you you could just mute your phone or mute your device. Okay, three minutes, and that's why I always do this. So if you have me muted, you'll know what the countdown is before we come back. Three minutes. Okay, so we're going to get ready to move on in about two minutes, about two minutes before we move on. We're going to need uh, black for the next step and white. Probably won't need any more purple, um, but I'm not going to throw it away. I've got it. I've got a little left on my plate just in case. You never know. Um, I keep thinking, I keep looking at the moon in this, in the original picture. And it looks like they've taken a little bit of a uh, light gray for the texture in the moon. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna use gray or if I'm gonna use purple. I haven't decided yet. So I'm not gonna get rid of my purple because I might, I might use it still. So at this point, before we move on, I'm thinking about, I'm gonna put my black ground on there and then I'm gonna put some trees on there. And when I put my trees in, I'm gonna want a fine brush, a, a fine round brush for those little branches, okay? And it's funny too, I keep looking at this spot and I'm like, what is that in that tree? No, that's, um, that's paint that I've splattered. Oops. But you could put a, uh, you could put some, uh, some crows up in there. Oh, all kinds of fun things. Okay, let's get ready to move on, shall we? It's 7.45. So let's put our ground in there. And my ground, I'm feeling about two-ish fingers across the bottom, two-ish. And it doesn't have to be super straight. It can have a little roll to it, that's up to you, whatever your ground looks like in your world. But we have to give our fence and our trees someplace to sit. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna use my big brush. I'm gonna clean it out in my water cup. And again, I'm okay 
if my brush is a little dirty, I'm okay if the water's a little dirty because I'm going to use black. So I'm going to tap, tap, tap in the bottom of the cup. Dry it off on my paper towel. I'm going to go into my black. And I'm flipping my plate around so I'm not using the black from here. I'm going to use the black from here because this black has a little bit of blue in it. That's why I always use, um, I always take my paint from the edge of the paint puddle, never the middle of the paint puddle. So now I have clean black over on this side I can use. And let's put our ground across there. Again, about two-ish fingers. And you can decide, is it straight? Does it have a little roll to it? Up to you. What your ground looks like in your world. A nice little roll there happening. Don't know that that was necessarily intentional, but I like it. And then I'm going to take another minute and get the edge and get that bottom. So my uh, my entire canvas will be covered after this step. Bottom edge. There we go. Okay. I'm going to pop that brush in my water cup. So I'll take a few minutes and let you um, let you get your ground on there, and then we'll talk about trees. Love them or hate them, right? I know a lot of us despise trees and a lot of us love trees. But if we despise trees, maybe it's because they don't always go so well. So maybe we need to practice trees. So. If you really don't like trees, but you're doing this painting with me, think about it like it's practice, because that's the only way we get better, right, is if we practice. Okay, I'm gonna give you another minute or so, and then I'm gonna start working on trees. And when I get ready to start on my trees, I'm going to keep in mind where I want the moon. Um, is anybody going to put trees in front of their moon? Should we do the moon first? What do you think? I didn't even think about that. Hmm. Maybe we should do the moon first in case somebody has a tree that reaches up in front of their moon. You know what? I, I think that's a plan. I think we should do the moon first. So because I've thrown that out there, you're going to want to make sure the top left corner where we're going to put the moon, make sure that's dry. So if you're not ready, if you need to get to the blow dryer, let me know and I'll wait another minute or so. But I say, yep, change of plans. I say we go ahead and put that moon on there next. So how about how are we going to get that round moon on there? Are you going to freehand it? Are you going to use a coffee cup? Hmm. Are you going to use a toilet paper roll? I don't know. It's up to you. So let's take a minute. Let's make sure that top left corner of your canvas is dry. And let's find something to trace. And we'll put a moon on there. I just thought about that because it might be lovely to have a nice big, a nice big round moon. And then maybe your trees stretch in front of it. Or maybe we put bats flying across it. Okay, I'm going to go get a coffee cup, I think.
Ah, uh, yes, what a better cup than to use um, the Art Institute of Chicago. I feel like I should use this coffee cup. Okay. So you don't have to trace if you don't want to. You can freehand it. That's entirely up to you. But I'm not really good at getting things perfectly round. So um, I love having something I can something I can use. So I'm going to uh, use my medium brush. I'm going to clean it out and dry it off. And I'm going to use the teeniest, tiniest bit of paint. You don't even have to use paint if you don't want. You can just use water to trace it, and you'll be able to see where your wet mark is, but you have to move fast. I'm gonna use a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of paint because I will have a hard time seeing the water mark. So just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of white paint. I'm gonna set this, I'm gonna step over in front, so I apologize. And I'm gonna set this down, because I'm gonna knock it over if I'm not careful. And I'm just going to trace a trace a moon on there, trace a circle. Zoop. There we go, roundish. All right. Way better than if I tried to freehand it. Okay, so I am going to wipe this off before I forget that I got paint on it. Here we go. Okay, so now that I have my I have my moon traced on there, when we fill that in. I'm going to use my medium brush with a little bit of white paint and know that you may need to give it two coats of paint to get it nice and solid. Okay, raise this back up here. Oops. There we go. But as I fill it in, I'm going to fill it in like a bullseye. I'm going to go around and around and around to the middle. That will help with my moon looking round. And I'm not using a ton of paint because I know that I'm probably going to have to give it two coats to get it to look the way I want it to look. So it doesn't do me any good to use a lot of paint first time around. Because I know I. I guess if I use less paint, it'll dry a little faster and I'll be able to give it a second coat sooner. I think that's my logic there. Logic never really plays into my plan, but for, for this, I think it actually does. Here we go. So right now I'm just filling my moon in with white. I'm gonna put some texture on it here in a minute, but I'm just making sure to get a nice, a nice coat of white, get a nice clean edge. There we go. Okay, I'm pretty good about that. So now there are a couple ways we can attack the, um, 
the texture in the moon, you can, there are a couple different things you can do. You can texture it so it looks like the surface of the moon, right? So it looks, it looks like cheese, right? You can texture it with a, um, with a, a, an old brush that's kind of splayed out. You can give it, right? You can finger paint it a little if you want. You can use a crumpled up paper towel with a little bit of gray. Um, this is what I said earlier. I didn't throw away my purple paint because I might use purple up there instead of gray. But now that I'm there, I feel like I might use gray. Anyway, so you can get some texture in that moon. I think before I do that, I'm going to leave it pretty white and pretty solid, but I'm going to shade it a little, I think. So I will show you both things that I'm thinking in my brain. So I still have that medium brush. I'm going to take a little bit of white and the teeny, 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 tiniest bit of black. I'm just going to get a lovely, um, a lovely medium gray color here, right there. Just a little bit of gray. Okay. And I'm going to go, my moon is wet. I'm going to get it nice and close so you can see. And I'm going to go along the left and the bottom with a little bit of gray. So right there in that white, left and bottom. And then I'm gonna work my way into the center a little bit to fade it out. That is really hard to see, isn't it? There we go. Need to angle it to get the light off of it. Let me do that again. So white, little bit of black, and I'm gonna add a little more black. I'm gonna accentuate it a little more so you can really see what I'm doing. So this is maybe a little darker than you'll want to do, but I'm gonna go along the left, and the bottom, and at first swipe, that looks aggressive, but then I'm just gonna keep going, a little smaller, a little smaller toward the middle, and it just fades nicely. If you feel like you didn't get a, you didn't get a nice fade, you can always rinse out, get a little bit of white, go back in and soften it. So that's, um, that's one way to go, right? You can just do a lovely shade that way. Oh, I like that. But what if we wanted to texture the moon so it looked a little, a little Swiss cheese-ish? I'm gonna take a piece of a paper towel. I just tore off a piece of my paper towel that I've been drying my brush on. And I'm gonna crumple it up here and make myself a little, a little stamper. And take the teeniest, teeniest bit of black and mix it in with some of that white. You're looking for a, for a light gray. You can always go darker, but once you have a dark gray moon, it's hard to go back from that. So I've got a really light gray on there. And I'm just gonna get in here and just kind of play a little bit. A little bit of texture there, a little there, some there, some there. That's, that feels a little much to me. So I might take a little bit of white and get back in there and play. It's darker, it's lighter. Just some fun texture in that moon. go. All righty. Let's see. I think I'm going to flip this over. I feel like my gray got a little dark, so I'm going to flip this over, scrunch it back up again, get a little bit of white. 
Go back over a couple of those spots. That's, um, this is one of those things you could just continue to play in that moon. And if you're like, Ugh, I, I don't like what's happening there, then let it, um, let it dry, paint it back over white. The beauty of acrylic paint is it dries pretty quickly. Okay. So I'm going to be done with that moon. I'm going to move on to trees because that moon, I could just keep playing in it. All right, trees. Let's talk, let's talk a little bit about these trees. So we have the one, we have a big tree over here on the right hand side, right? That balances out the moon. So we have the one big tree over here that balances out this side of the painting, okay? So I'm gonna do a big tree, starts right there on the ground, goes up, up and almost like off the canvas. It covers that whole area. And then there are some smaller ones down here behind the fence. And then a couple medium-sized trees here over underneath the moon. Look at the way the trees are made, too. If you squint your eyes, it's a bunch of Ys. It's a bunch of Y shapes. So all my branches, I'm going to start with this main trunk. And then all my branches start on my tree and they go up and away. I always think up and away when I'm painting branches. I will never start on my, on my branch and pull down because that's broken, right? Everything is up and away. It's a bunch of Y shapes, okay? So I'm gonna start with my medium brush and then transition to my small brush. So I'm gonna start with my medium filbert. You can use your medium flat if you want. You can use your big brush if you want and use it skinny ways, that's up to you. And I'm gonna use black. Um, and my black has been here a while. It's starting to feel a little sticky. So I'm gonna take that medium brush, dip it in my water cup and come here in the edge and use that little bit of water in my brush to thin that paint down just a tiny, tiny bit. That'll help it come off the brush a little easier. And I'm gonna use that brush skinny ways. And I'm gonna start my tree maybe three-ish fingers in from the side. About three-ish fingers in. And that main branch is gonna come up. So it's gonna be fatter at the bottom and it's gonna get skinnier as we go. Skinny ways. Ooh. And get a little fatter at the bottom. So this is the way trees are built, right? They're a little fatter at the bottom and then they're skinnier as you go up and off. And I'm just gonna use this medium brush for, I don't know, maybe three or four of my main branches. So let's see, we said up and away, right? Up and away. And then I'm gonna jump over here to the right and go up a little, up and away. And don't forget to give him, give him feet, spread him out a little bit at the bottom. Give him, give him roots down into the ground. And I think that's all I'm gonna do with that, with that medium brush. I'm gonna pop that in the water cup and I'm gonna move on to my small brush now, my, my pointy, my liner brush. Now this, um, this original painting that we're looking at, there are a million little branches on there. That's up to you on how many branches you wanna put. And a lot of their branches appear to be pretty straight. I have a tendency when I paint trees, not, I won't necessarily paint them straight. I'll paint them so they have a little bit of wiggle to them, a little bit of movement. To do that, I will take my brush, my pointy brush, and I'll twirl it as I paint those branches. This is something that takes a little bit of practice, but once you master it, it's, it's really helpful to get 
tree branches that look more natural. Um, we have a tendency when we first start to paint trees to do branches that are very, um, very straight. They're almost too perfect. They're a little cartoonish. If you can master the technique of taking a pointy brush and twirling it when you're painting, you'll get a little wiggle. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm gonna load that brush up. Okay, I've got some black paint on there. I'm holding, I'm not holding my, my brush perpendicular to the canvas. I'm actually almost laying it flat. And that's nice because my background is dry. I can rest my hand on it. And it's still that Y shape, right? So I'm gonna lay it pretty flat and I'm gonna twirl it really slowly as I go. And that makes it look a little, you can see my initial branches are pretty, pretty straight, pretty perfect, almost too perfect. But my new ones, I can get a little, a little movement to them there by using, by using the, uh, the twirl method. And think everything is up and away. Okay. This is something that, it, again, it takes, it takes a lot of practice, but once you master it, it is totally worth it. Because then you just lay your branches on there fast and furious. I think I like um, twirling my branches too because I'm using paint all the way around my brush. So it, um, I can move, I can take a branch a lot further and not have to go back over it. If I try to go back over a branch to fix it, that's when things start to get weird. So I wanna be able to just paint it and just move on and not have to go back over it. all the branches and don't forget to give your branches branches and give those branches little branches and lots of little twiglets Okay, so I've got one tree there. Now it's up to you. There's a lot of stuff happening. So you can put as many or as few as you want on there. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep moving. I'm gonna head over here and put another one. Knowing that I don't wanna get it too terribly busy because I'll lose track of my fence when I put my fence over top. So I think I'm gonna put, I've got my one tree there. There are some other smaller ones in the background that I might put in. But I don't wanna put a ton in there because I don't wanna lose my fence when I put my fence on. So I'm gonna do a little one here that's off in the distance in the background. One right here. And then I want to get a couple over here that are medium-ish size. And 
every now and then I'm dipping that brush in the water and coming back over and thinning my paint down a little bit. If I don't do that, you can see where it's breaking up, where my paint is too, it's too thick, it's too sticky. But if I thin it out with just a little bit of water, it takes care of that problem. My paint will go a lot further if I thin it down just a little bit. So let's keep working on those trees. I'm gonna keep working on my trees here and then we'll get ready and put the fence in. Now, if you get a lot happening down here and you're afraid um, your fence is gonna compete with what's going on down there, it's, it's not gonna look right, you're gonna have a hard time differentiating your fence from your trees. We can always put little moonlight highlights on your fence if we need to, okay? Let's have another tree here. Ooh, that one almost touched the moon. Always remember to go back and splay them out just a little bit at the bottom. I like to say we're giving them feet. Feel the need to remind everyone to breathe. I want a shorter tree right here. Again, every now and then I'm dipping that brush in my water cup, coming back and thinning that paint down just a little bit. Helps it flow a little easier. And don't be afraid to let your trees overlap a little. They would in nature, right? They wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't avoid one another. They would, they would have their branches overlap a little bit. Okay, I think I might stop there. We'll put the fence on and then I'll decide if I need to do maybe some grass around the, around the fence posts. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stop there. So let's take 10 minutes. Let's take 10 minutes and continue to work on those trees. You can always add more later, but we don't wanna add too many until we get that fence on there, okay? So it's 8.15, how about 8.25? We'll put the fence on, and then we'll figure out what else we need. So for now, I'm, I'm gonna stop because I don't wanna do too much. I want to wait and put my fence on there and see what else I'm going to need after that. Okay, so 10 minutes, we'll move on. So 8.25.
Oh, and we have one more painting left until we get to uh, vote for September paintings. So I'm going to have you guys all do that again because that was a lot of fun. Have everybody pick the paintings that they want to do for the month. So I need to look and see how many Saturdays we have in September. I don't know. I'm going to disappear and go look at the calendar to figure out how many paintings we need to pick. But I already have the painting picked for next week. It's kind of feeling fallish. It's a gray background with um, with like a fall leaf branch that's like dripping into the water. Anyway, it's quite lovely. So I'm excited about that. We'll start to feel fall. Um, and let me let me go look at the calendar to see how many how many Saturdays we have in September. Four. Okay, we have four Saturdays in September. So we need to pick four paintings. So send me your ideas and I will, I will pull from those to have people vote on, I'll probably pull eight, seven or eight paintings to have people vote on Facebook, okay? Okay, so let's take um, about another, what, eight minutes? Yep, 825, we'll move on and put the fence on there. Oh, Emily, it just occurred to me, we haven't talked about dinner tonight. What are we having? Have you had dinner yet? Yeah? Okay, what'd you have? I'm curious. Was there butter? No, no butter? I'm so, while well, you're typing that up, I am super excited. Our, uh, I live out in the country and you gotta love country neighbors, right? So our um, our neighbor down the way, he he plants corn and soybeans, field corn, right? It's not not edible for human corn, but he plants them. Um, he put in twelve rows. Oh, that's awesome! That's good stuff. Um, he planted twelve rows of uh, sweet corn. He came down and honked the horn and dumped like a whole bag of sweet corn on my on my uh, on my front lawn so i'm having sweet corn and butter the good butter oh cassano's pizza i don't know that is it as good pizza yeah oh she's typing and you have to tell me what you got on it yeah what'd you get on it can you tell I haven't had dinner? I'm living vicariously through you. Oh, pepperoni sausage. So I'm a pepperoni mushroom onion girl, and then I add sausage on half for my husband. Mm. Onions, big chunks of onions. Oh my God, you got cheesy bread. So good with marinara. Yeah like food porn this is awful <laughs> oh my god stuffed cheesy bread yes mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know as we're talking I'm like I'm looking over at my corn but I remembered I went to the farmer's market today and I got the biggest tomato so I might have a tomato sandwich for dinner I don't know mm. big old fat slice of tomato on some toasted bread, a little bit of Miracle Whip, some salt and pepper. Mm. I heard somebody call that a poor man sandwich, right? I thought, well, it kind of is, right? It's bread and tomato. So freaking good. Mm. And they have to be fresh tomatoes. They have to be like garden fresh tomatoes. You can only eat those this time of year while the tomatoes are fresh. Mm. You know what though? Maybe a fried egg sandwich with my tomato food. Mm. You always trust the chubby girl when it comes to food, right? <laughs> okay, so we've got about 
right? I do love tomatoes, fresh tomatoes. Okay, so I have to share with you my tomato that I got at the farmer's market. This, this sweet baby is going in my belly tonight, right? Is that not, she said it's an ox heart tomato because it's like pointed. I don't know what it is, but it is going in my belly. Oh, <laughs> so wrong. Okay, and yet so right. Okay, so four minutes and we'll move on to fence as I stand here and hug my tomato. Do you wonder like years from now if people saw these videos, they'd be like, what the heck was going on there? Tomatoes. Okay. So a couple more minutes and we'll get, I'm going to put my tomato back and we'll get ready and put our fence on. And that might be it. We'll see what else we need to do. Oh, I don't know why, Tawny, but this makes me think of you. I feel like we need to put a black cat right here on this post. Or maybe down here. Can you tell I love Halloween? I'm already like channeling, channeling spooky Halloween stuff. Okay, I put my tomato back. Oh, okay, Sue, let's see. Um, my little branches. Is that what you're talking about, I'm guessing? The little branches? Let me do that again. So I have my, yes, you should do a kitty. Okay, so I have my pointy brush. I'm gonna take it um, in the water cup. So I have just a drip of water on it. And I'm gonna go here in the edge and thin it down just a little bit with that drip of water. Because if I thin that black paint down a little bit, it'll flow off the brush easier, okay? And then I'm holding my brush, not perpendicular. Oh, the leaves on the branches. I don't have leaves on my branches. Hmm. But let me let me finish this and then I'll and then I'll show you something. So I'm gonna hold this perpendicular to my to my canvas and twirl it with that thin down paint. If I were going to do leaves, let me, um, let me get a plate and let me show you, if I were going to do leaves, let me show you what I would do. Okay, so let's say, let me put a tree on here and give it some branches. I'm just gonna run through this real quick. So it's not gonna be super pretty, but it'll give you the idea. Make sure to spread it out there. Give him feet. Okay. Okay. So if I were going to give this branches, I would probably go to my medium brush. And I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use purple so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take some, some black or some uh, blue and some red and a little bit of white. Just so you can see what's happening here. So I have my uh, medium filbert brush loaded up with paint and I'm going to use it skinny ways. And if I were, if I were thinking branches, if I were going to do, or not branches, if I were thinking leaves, I'm going to use this brush skinny ways and I'm going to pull into the branch, into the branch. I'm doing just little, little pull in. I'm using my brush skinny ways, loaded up with paint, pulling into the branch. We did a couple that were falling. 
couple on the ground. You could even, um, artist license, right? You can put some out here that aren't even like touching branches. There are no branches underneath those guys up there, but that's okay. So if I were gonna do leave, that's what I would do. I would, I would load that, um, load your medium brush up and use it skinny lays, and I'm pulling into the branches. Uh, we have a some people have a tendency um, to pull out. I wouldn't do that because then you get the furry edge on the outside, and that's not what you want. You want the furry edge to be closest to the branches. Hope that helped. That was kind of a fun little tutorial. Okay. All right. Oh, um, you know. Anita, I would be tempted to do, if you were going to do leaves, which there are not leaves, but if you were going to do leaves, um, black, maybe dark gray, you could do dark purple. That would be pretty. It's really up to you. You can have so much fun with this. You know, I've done... Oh, orange or red would be pretty. And I was just thinking, um, Jessica and Kelly, I was just thinking, I've done a painting like this before that had um, yellow. It had like, um, ooh, I used the other end of my big brush and did yellow uh, dots out toward the end of the branches and it looked like little yellow buds. And we love yellow you said i think you said yellow or orange we love those colors and let me tell you let's do a little bit of art theory here a um, little bit of color theory we love those colors yellow and orange because they're complementary colors so think about your color wheel we have a lot of purple in the background opposite from purple on the color wheel is yellow so those would really pop if you mix them together you get you get poop brown but as long as your background is dry and you put yellow on there, it'll really pop because you've got that purple. This thing, we have a lot of blue in there. So orange would be really pretty because orange is opposite the color wheel from the blue. So complementary colors, they really accentuate each other well. If you decide that you're going to use colors though, make sure that you have um, nice solid solid color, not transparent. If you're using student grade paint, you're gonna to have to add a little bit of white to it to make it nice and solid, okay? Okay, Ooh, let's put our fence on there, shall we? I love that you guys are making this your own tonight. This is exciting. So the most important thing that I can help guide you with on the fence, keep your posts up and down. For whatever reason, when we do paintings like this where there's a fence, the posts start to like lean one way or the other. When they get shorter, for whatever reason, people start to paint them like they're laying over. And I'm not quite sure why, but your posts have to stay parallel to the edge of your canvas. They do get shorter as you go back, but they have to stay straight up and down. So I'm not worried about the cross braces yet. I'm just gonna put those vertical posts up and down. So I'm gonna use my medium brush and I'm just gonna use black. I can highlight it later, but I'm gonna come over, ooh, about a quarter of the way over. And this post, if I split this painting in half, up and down. The top of that post is almost halfway up my painting. That feels kind of high for me, so I'm gonna take it down a little bit. I can always make it taller, but once I have it too tall, it's hard to go back. So medium brush with black and about a quarter of the way over, straight up and down. And that first post is gonna be about as wide as my index finger, maybe. And for me to get it straight, I'm gonna to have to step in front. I apologize. Get 
on this side. Okay, so about a quarter-ish of the way over. I, th I think halfway up is too tall. I'm gonna go a little shorter so I can get a cat or a pumpkin on there if I decide I want to. Okay. Okay, parallel to the edge of the canvas. Has to be straight up and down. Here we go, post number one. Now, as I work my way to the left, they're gonna get a little bit shorter each time. If you're looking for numbers, there's one, that's the big, that first big post, number one. And then we have number two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven over. So I wonder, how about we do the smallest post and then we go to the middle and then we get one, two in between those and we get one, two in between those. All right, stay with me. I'm gonna put the smallest one on down here about ooh, two, three-ish fingers in from the side straight up and down. It's funny, spacing is, spacing is never my strong suit, so I always look for ways to, um, to make it easier for me, because spacing, right? So, I know there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have one, four is the middle, and seven is the other side. So I have one and seven, and let's put four right in the middle. See me holding my brush so I can see where, where he wants to land. There. So now that I have each end, I have the middle, and I know I want to get two in between here and two in between here. Okay. Okay. So one here. Here, one. Okay. And as I do this, I remind myself this is an old weathered fence, right? Spacing isn't going to be perfect. They're going to be all different. Uh, all different widths. Okay. Yeah, like I want this first one to be a little bit bigger. Okay. Now that I have my uprights, I need to put my, my uh, boards, my, my cross boards. So this is the corner of my fence, this first one that I put on. So my cross boards are gonna, these first two are gonna be straight. They're gonna be parallel, parallel to the bottom of my canvas. 
the rest of these, because we're talking a little more about perspective, are going to go downhill. So let's put these first two on. So this is going to be as straight as I can get it, to, as parallel as I can get it to the uh, to the bottom of the canvas. Again, I got to step in front because straight, not my not my forte. And I'm just using black. Number one, number two. Okay. Now when I start my, my uh, crossbars on the rest of these, I'm gonna start right here at this point. So it's gonna be, about, uh, it's gonna be different for everybody, so I'm not gonna give you a measurement. But if I hold my brush, I can see about where those are gonna go. Right, if I hold my brush there, that gives me an idea. So I'm gonna start those in, this, in the same place as this crossboard. Whew, whew. I just made me nervous. Make you nervous? These boards would meet here at this post, right? So you're gonna start there. And go down to here, leaving a little bit of that post to show above. Back over it again. And then I've gotta get my, my bottom board on there. So I'm gonna start it in the same the same place where that board meets. There we go. I'm not going to overthink it or stress about it. They kind of came together down here. That's okay. We're not going to stress about it. Oh. And just like that, shabam. Ah. Now, something that I talked about a little bit ago, if you have a lot going on down here and you feel like you're having a hard time differentiating your fence from your, um, from your trees, you can. Um, at this point, if everything's optional, right? You can stick with me, you can do your own thing but I'm going to talk through a couple scenarios here. So I'm going to go to my, my pointy brush with uh, a, uh, like a medium gray. White is going to be too much. Black, you won't be able to see it. I'm going to do a little bit of highlight. So think about your light source, right? Your moon is your light source and think about how it's shining. So it might shine on the top of Oh, Rita, I'm so glad you're here, honey. So it might shine on the top of some of these posts. Right there on the top, that's very subtle. Maybe on the top of some of these beams, these uh, cross braces. On the top. Maybe right here on the top of this post. Along the top of here. It's a very subtle kind of thing, but it, it's nice. It helps pull your fence forward a little bit. And this is just if you feel like you're having a hard time seeing your fence, if you have too many trees or you could go down the left side of these posts if you wanted a little. You can play in there as much as you want. The beauty of this is if you don't like it, <laughs> you black it back over. Like that got a little too aggressive for me. That gray got a little too aggressive. I don't like it. I'm just going to black it back over. There we go. Softened it up a little bit. 
Okay, so that's something you can do. That's fun. I feel like I want a little, I want a little gray on this top board here. There we go, some highlights. Uh, something else you could do if you were if you were playing, you could take your uh, your little brush with a little bit of black. I'm gonna thin it down just like I did the uh, the tree branches. I'm gonna get in close here again. And what if we decide around some of these posts to put some some weeds? What if I need weeds here? So I'm gonna set that brush down. I've got my pointy brush. I'm gonna set it down in the black and I'm gonna pull up and away. And get some little grasses there. I feel like this corner post would have, would have little clumps of grasses around it. Oh, maybe, maybe a couple here, there. go just putting some little some little grasses along my fence posts it's kind of fun let's see what else oh a cat we talked about a cat let's see i don't think i'm going to put a cat on mine but i can show you the shape of a cat if I were gonna put a cat someplace, let's pretend we're gonna have a cat here at the bottom of our at the bottom of our tree. So a cat shape is like a chubby teardrop. Chubby teardrop. And then a cat's head is kind of like a football close. It's like a football sideways. So chubby teardrop, if we fill that in, and then a teardrop sideways, and we're going to fill that in with black. Okay, and then we'll give little pointy ears, little triangle ears. Boop. Then you could give your cat a little tail. Zerp. If you have a really fine, steady hand, a fine little brush or a paint pen, you could give your cat little whiskers out. Like that. So there's a cat if you're going to put a cat on there. Um, I'm feeling pumpkin. I think I'm going to put a pumpkin on there, right there on that fence post. So if you're going to put a pumpkin, it's a football or a football, I'm sorry, a basketball. But sports on the brain tonight. And I'm going to do it in black and I'm just going to fill it in. So it's just going to be a black circle for now. I'm going to give it a little, a little stem. Blurp. And then I'm going to give it some highlights so we can really tell what it is. So I'm going back to that medium gray. Oh, wow. That is really odd, odd shaped. Stand by. Let me let me fix that. I got up close to it and I'm like, what is happening there, my pumpkin? Round that guy out a little bit. Here we go. Okay, so I've got my pointy brush and I've got a little bit of that gray like I used for the fence. And then I'm gonna, my moonlight is coming from, from that direction. So I'm gonna highlight the left side, a little gray. I'm gonna highlight the left side of that stem. And then pumpkins have spines, right? So I'm gonna give him a couple little 
the idea of those little spines, um, the little creases in the pumpkin. Oh, that's fun. A pumpkin. You could decide to put a face on it if you wanted, a little jack-o'-lantern face. Let's see, what other ideas do we have? What about, ooh, owl on a tree. Ooh, I like that. I was just thinking, what about, um, what other ideas do you guys have? Okay, an owl. Where, where should I put an owl? I feel like over here somewhere to balance it out with my pumpkin over there. So if I were going to do an owl, let me show you here. So an owl, you're going to need to take time in between to let it dry because the way we know it's an owl is those big white eyes, right? So let me put an owl right here on this branch. Okay, so it's going to be um, an oval that sits right on that branch. Fill it in. It's going to be a round head that kind of sits in the oval. And then don't call them ears. The minute you call them ears, it turns into a cat in the tree. Call them tufts. Owls have, they do have ears, but they're like little tufts. So to make them tufts, I'm going to set my brush right there where the ear would be, right? I'm going to set it right there, and I'm just going to push up just a little. Oh, just wiggle it up just a little tiny oh, bit. And wiggle it up just a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit. And then fill that head in. So they're there, but they're really, really tiny. Okay. Now, depending on how detailed you want to get, at this point, I would let that dry. Then put big white eyes and then little black pupils. But again, depending on how detailed you want to get, you could take that pointy brush with a little bit of gray. Oh, that's very white. A little bit of gray. And you could do little uh, feather marks on the belly. I'm doing just little pull downs. Adding a little texture there on the belly. You do a little highlight on those, on those tufts. I almost called them ears. A little highlight on top of the head. You could do a lot of playing in there. But again, do, do that in stages, right? So I would let that dry, then put big white eyes. Ooh, maybe a little yellow, maybe a little yellow beak right in between those eyes. And then teeny tiny little black pupils. Your owl eye. I'm going to exaggerate this. Ready? So here's your owl eyes. Do a little beak, burp, little point down triangle. And then when you put those pupils in there, those would be white. And when you put the pupils in, put them close ish to the beak. If you put him in the middle, um, he looks possessed, right? Don't, don't put your pupils right in the middle of those white circles. He looks possessed and weird. Put him down closer. He almost looks cross-eyed, but it makes him cute. Okay, what else? What else do we have? Owl in the tree. Any other ideas? Because if not, I'm going to go ahead and call this done. Um, let me go in. Oh, Rita, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, bird, bird. So let's see, if I were going to do a bird, it would be kind of a raven-ish crow. Let me show you a bird. You know what, I think I'm going to do one on my painting here. I feel like I'm going to put one right here. So if we were going to do a bird, like a raven, a crow, uh, whatever kind of bird it is, it's going to be in silhouette. So it's going to be black. Okay. So I'm going to do, I'm going to bring my branch out just a little bit so I have something to sit him on. There we go. 
and then I'm going to do, it's an oval, but it's kind of um, at a 45 degree angle ish. It's an egg shape, but it's kind of, it's not straight up and down. It's kind of tilted. And then I'm going to give him a head. A little beak that points out. And if I go down his back, I'm going to give him a little tail feather floop. There we go. There's my bird. And I'll fill him in. And because he's silhouette, I'm not going to give him, I'm not going to give him an eye or anything. I'm just going to leave him black. There we go. Bird. Hey, you're welcome, Anita. Oh, bats in the moon. All right, bats. Bats, let me ponder this real quick. I love bats. I absolutely adore bats. And yet, you would think I would know how to draw a bat. Oh, yes, let me go in. <laughs> Crescent moon and the Big Dipper. I love it. Okay, uh, let me go in and give you the opportunity to unmute yourself. Stand by. There we go. Okay, you should have the opportunity now to unmute yourself if you want. And I'm going to figure out how to do a how to do a bat here. I added doggy to my picture too. Ooh, ooh, let me see. <laughs> it's in your um, message. Oh, did did you send it? Yeah, I sent it already. Perfect. Perfect. Where'd you put the dog? Um, down to the left under the tree where you were talking. Somebody was talking about putting the cat on the yes. left side of your painting. Yes. I tried to make it look like his tail was wagging and I did a crescent <laughs> moon instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. I'm trying to figure out my bats here. I'm running out of plate room. Okay, so for bats I'm feeling Stacy, I think this is for you. For bats I'm I'm gonna do it a little bit bigger to accentuate it but I'm feeling a body, like a little, little oval. And then I'm gonna go a frown and a frown, frown and a frown. You could almost stop there, right? I'm gonna give him little, little pointy bat ears. And then I'm gonna thicken it up just a little closer to his body. That's fun. So I would probably, if it were me, I would probably do one, uh, one big bat like that, and then I would do a couple, a couple little ones. Are they on a branch or on, a, on the air? The bats? Yeah. The bats? Um, I think she's going to do them in the moon. Oh, that is great. Oh. I think that these would be these would be in the air if you were gonna do a bat on a branch. Okay, so here's here's some branches. If you were gonna do a bat hanging from a branch, I would do um, like a it long be, skinny. It has to be upside down. It does. Bats. Just yeah, like bats this. hang upside down. Yeah. Let's see. I put him really close to the branch. What if he needs, I feel like he needs little feet. And then an oval. Little ears. <laughs> That's so silly. That makes oh, me happy. That is pretty cool. It's good. Yeah. That's fun. You could even, if you wanted, you could put teeny tiny little um, white dots for eyes. That would make it a little creepy. <laughs> Like the moonlight is catching his eyes. <laughs> oh, 
Can we show well, I you think how... with that, I... yes. Can we show you our pictures? Yes, Donita, I, I would love to see your picture. Show it to me. Oh, that's beautiful, Anita. Well done. I'm going to put uh, black and uh, gray leaves. I'm yes. going to put black and gray leaves and then I'll put, as you said, you know, some bats and birds. I think that would be great. I can't wait to see it finished. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Well done. Well, everyone, I do believe we'll call this finished tonight. Um, don't forget to send me your picture, uh, private message it to the studio, or um, email it to me. I know some of you like to email it, and that's cool. We'll call this done at 9 o'clock. So by 10 o'clock, please send your picture to me. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off for the night. Um, who else do we still have here? Ange, are you still here? Oh, we lost Ange. Ange and Tawny, we lost them both. So all nice right. to have everyone, you know, I miss all of you a lot. Well, we're so happy you're back, Anita. And if you have ideas for paintings you want to see in September, send them to me. I'm looking for ideas. Sure, I'll do because I love fall. So I want fall paintings. <laughs> oh, I love I love fall too. That's my that's my season. It's my time. Angie's still here. All righty. Is Angie here? Yes. Where'd you go, dude? Nowhere. I just was muted. Can you <laughs> find us? Oh, that's awesome. Those what? look fantastic, honey. Well I done. Did, that. <laughs> did you do that for me? I did it for, for my new cat that Gabby like gave me a cat. Can we see it again? Oh. Is so Gabby can, Gabe? Mm -hmm. Can I see yours again? It looks nice. This one? Wow, it's beautiful. I Very used nice. a long skinny canvas, so it's, it's a little bit beautiful. beautiful. Thank you. Love it. Well done, Ange. Well done, Dad. We'll get our picture here Good soon. Good job. Okay. Well, I see pictures are starting to come through, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off. You have until 10 o'clock to send your, um, your paintings to me. So until next week, I will see y'all then. Next Thank Saturday you. Night. Bye. Thank you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having Bye -bye. me. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everybody.